A man spent hours watching a butterfly struggling to emerge from its cocoon. After a long struggle, it appeared to be exhausted and remained absolutely still. The man decided to help the butterfly, and with a pair of scissors, he cut open the cocoon. However, the butterfly's body was very small and wrinkled, and its wings were all crumpled. The butterfly spent the rest of its brief life dragging around its shrunken body and shriveled wings. What the man had failed to understand was that the tight cocoon and the efforts that the butterfly had to make in order to squeeze out of that tiny hole were nature's way of training the butterfly and of strengthening its wings. A midwife is more of a medical person, so it's more of like an OBGYN. She's actually the one that catches the baby. A doula is there with the mother 24-7, you know, while she's uh, laboring in the beginning of the laboring, if she wants it. It's up to the mom when she wants the doula to come. The doula is more for physical comfort, emotional comfort, stability, spiritual comfort, that kind of thing. Oh, good to see you, darling. Come on in. A doula does nothing medical. She is there to, to comfort, to bring the techniques of relaxation, to focus on postpartum care, to help the mom be emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and physically ready to have an empowered, vaginal, normal, uninvasive birth. <laughs> So how are you? How are you feeling? Um, I've been feeling good. I've been feeling better. Um, I was feeling a little tired, uh, yeah. but I started taking more um, iron and incorporating more green leafy vegetables into my diet to kind of give me more energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Some people might think that a doula is an extra expense that isn't necessarily needed within a birth. When it comes to the partner, sometimes the husband doesn't necessarily understand, you know, why this extra person needs to be part of this beautiful bonding moment for, for he and his wife or his girlfriend. Well, that was better, actually. Good. My uh, prior my past partner wasn't very supportive of any natural alternative, uh, just any sort of therapies or medicines in itself, so um, I just felt like not having that kind of, it was overwhelming, it was scary. You just recently had a little bit of a scare yes. this past weekend. Can you tell us what happened exactly? Well, I hadn't felt the baby move all night. She moved during the night, but I didn't feel her the next day on Saturday mm -hmm. move at all during the day. Now, is that when you called me? Yes. Okay. What no, I noticed for me, um, what stood out was the fact that you said the baby was really busy the night before. Yes. So when she said that to me, I, was like, I thought, okay, I think we have a position thing going on. Women have always assisted in birth from the beginning of time. And we saw a decline of it during the era of the British reign. Hospitals became very prevalent during you know, Queen Victoria's time. And you saw the decline of that and the embracing of the medical and the, the sterile, clean looking, because we know now they weren't very sterile or clean at all but it was something that was very much separate and detached and removed. And basically that whole era took the emotion and the compassion and the spirituality out of birthing. Birth was always in the home, death was always in the home, so it became a very normal part of life. And once they became separate and removed, they became these mysteries in this dark, scary place. 
Back in the 50s, the medical industry completely changed. I've seen footage and pictures of women who have bags over their head during delivery, and they're in five-point restraints, and they just, they really talk about dark ages. <laughs> that to me feels like, like almost a torture thing from the, from the dark ages. It's very hard to honor birth in a way that is cruel. That's when the whole medical industry took over birthing and people kind of forgot what a natural birth was or a home birth or a midwife. And they were kind of made to look like, you know, snake oil people or like, you know, witches or whatever you want to call them. In the South, the granny midwives were still there, still doing things, even though they were being persecuted and run around, run out of town. There was a lot of them, and they birthed communities for nothing, for a chicken, for, you know, some eggs, for a, a goat, you know. It be, it, it, it's because of them that it continued on this underground level, and then Ina Mae Gaskin set up the farm. Midwives and they well they weren't midwives at the time, but they went into training with nurses and doctors and became midwives again and you know doulas and kind of traveled around like a gypsy train. It was beautiful <laughs> and spread the, the word doula again and spread natural childbirth. And she's an amazing, amazing woman. The idea that you could have a choice, that you could have a birth that was informed and full of consent, instead of feeling bullied, told you're being a bad mother, things happen to you without your knowledge. You know, that became, in the 70s, the ultimate you know, goal, that we're gonna do it this way. This, this gives us respect, this gives us power, this gives us a say. The idea of being rescued, the idea of having it be comfortable, I don't want to feel anything. That statement, you hear a lot. Oh, I don't want to feel anything, I'm just going to the hospital, I'm going to get the shot, and then boom, it's going to be a baby, I'm going to be cute, my makeup's going to be done, and I'm going to... I don't want to feel anything. It's different if you say, I'm afraid to feel anything. There's so much room in that for a shift or a change, an awareness. Even if you got that, okay, I'm scared of this, so I'm going to go to the hospital and I'm going to have them do this because I'm afraid of this. That's knowledge. It's a whole different mindset. Uh, the experience that I had the first time around wasn't what I really expected. I was really going for a natural birth and it kind of turned into a last minute overnight. Um, you're going in for a C-section next morning. My son was breached, so um, I feel like I didn't really have a lot of time to make those decisions. And I, it ended up kind of being a pretty traumatic experience. Okay, first off the bat, if you are having a hospital birth, you better have a doula. She's not an expense that um, you can let go. It's very necessary actually because you cut your chances of having a c-section a cesarean section in half by having a doula with you in a hospital setting it's as necessary as oxygen of course i love being part of the natural births but um you know i feel like the women who do decide to to have that sort of birth deserve support as well there are some OBGYNs out there who are so pro, 
thank goodness. You know, they get it. They appreciate the midwives. They love when a doula has walked into the office because it's, it makes for a better outcome. And if you're really truly about the outcome, then you embrace this movement. You embrace the resurgence of the doula. When I first started four years ago, there was a lot of like, oh, the doula's here, you know, she's kind of in the way type thing. But I've noticed, you know, in the last year or so that and there's even a space on the intake paperwork for a doula now, <laughs> which is new. That, that's a good thing. Um, and nurses and doctors, you know, are, are more willing to work with a doula now. The infant mortality rate has risen in America. The maternal mortality rate has also arisen in America. We have so much information and so much knowledge for us to be down in this area where there, you know, we're next to like some third world countries. It's held in a high place in every country but here. Here it's held, held in a monetary place. It's about the money. Whereas you have Europe showing these beautiful, amazing numbers because it is a feminine-driven idea of birth. It's that idea that you bring the nurturing, you bring the compassion, these aspects of the divine feminine. You bring that wisdom. You bring that lineage of ancestors. You bring it all back into that birth room. It can change family, a community, a city, a state, a country, a nation, the world. It is so not just about that one person. I think that the way that we enter this world really um, tells how our life is going to be. You know, if we're happy and we're easily coming out of the womb, we're going to easily flow through the lessons that life gives us. Whereas if we're kind of cut out or it's, it's, it's a rocky beginning and we feel scared and all of a sudden we've got these huge lights and we feel cold and, you know, we're not in safety anymore, I feel like that, that leaves, it leaves a scar. If you have the mindset that this is a beautiful, unconscious, sacred thing, a rite of passage for the mother, the birth partner, and the baby, that raises up the vibration in such a way that gives it meaning. And our lives are validated with meaning. And so that mother who births that child in that consciousness with that vibration is setting the tone for that child's life.